a 32 year old woman presents to your primary care clinic for an urgent care visit she reports that she has had multiple episodes of crampy episodic abdominal pain over the last 6 months even the previous one was uh, having abdominal pain but if you see the previous case once again uh, it is clearly states that you know the abdominal pain was not associated generally with the nausea or vomiting or diarrhea or anything right they did not mention anything in this case but in this case there is a episodes of crampy episodic abdominal pain over the last 6 months and this abdominal pain is typically associated with the nausea and constipation and she denies any new medications like previous case what we are discussing or a significant change in her diet which means uh, not fasting at all so both are the clues they are telling you that it is not acute intermittent porphyria this is very important clue she denies any new medication which means she is not taking valproic acid like that it is and no or no significant change in her diet means she is not uh, under fasting or anything although she does note that she has been trying to lose weight as of late and uh, will go on 3 to 4 day stretches of fasting now this is what is a very important clue in our case 3 to 4 day stretches of fasting right so fasting is the one which can there is no change in the diet patterns but there is a at a stretch of 3 to 4 day stretch of fasting which clearly indicates that increase in the heme synthesis because this is one of the precipitating factor okay her husband who has accompanied her to the appointment also notes that she is often hysterical and seems to hallucinate during the attacks of abdominal pain so even in the previous one like in acute intermittent porphyria also there was like neuropsychiatric problems right there will be hallucination uh, during the attacks of the abdominal pain may be seen in that and even the physical examination is notable for hypoactive deep tendon reflexes so there will be hyporeflexia which is seen in acute intermittent porphyria now her abdominal examination is unremarkable like aip although you do make note of several blisters on her extremities this is one of the very important uh, differential diagnosis features several blisters what you can see over here is the one which can tell you what exactly the case is because in the acute intermittent porphyria we did not note any several blisters on her extremities right and there is no much difference in the age also i think the previous case was 26 year old woman and uh, this was like uh, this is like a 32 year old woman you initiate routine testing for abdominal symptoms which is unremarkable upon reviewing her case with a specialist you decide to send a stool sample you initiate routine testing for abdominal symptoms which is unremarkable upon reviewing her case with a specialist you decide to send a stool sample to evaluate for elevated levels of uh, coproporphyrins and they don't give you this a very easy clue in your case but uh, from upon reviewing everything is like you know uh, is a clue what we are giving but uh, by the time of unremarkable you should be in a position to identify what exactly the case is so okay elevated levels of coproporphyrins as you suspect that her symptoms may be related to a defect in the process of heme synthesis what do you think the case is what is the case several blisters on her extremities even in this case we are not talking about any photosensitivity and 3 uh, to 4 day stretches of fasting is very important and also neuropsychiatric problems are present and there is a multiple episodes of crampy episodic abdominal pain over the last 6 months and this case is about hereditary coproporphyria we are talking about hereditary coproporphyria i want you to look at the cycle if you have textbook in front of you it is an autosomal dominant disorder hereditary coproporphyria that results from a defect in the coproporphyrinogen oxidase and where exactly this enzyme 
is seen copropyrifosinogen oxidase we know that it is a enzyme of the biosynthesis of heme where specifically if you see the step where it catalyzes it catalyzes the conversion of copropyrifosinogen 3 to protoporfyrinogen 9 that is pro protoporfyrinogen 9 so this is the step conversion of the copropyrifosinogen 3 to pro protoporfyrinogen 9 when this enzyme is deficient then the precursors of heme not only the copropyrifosinogen 3 porphobilinogen amino levulinic acid all these three will accumulate mainly copropyrifosinogen 3 does not cause a remarkable clinical manifestations but we know that because of the accumulation of the copropyrifosinogen 3 the relative substrates got accumulated like pbg and uh, amino levulinic acid these are the ones responsible for the central as well as peripheral neurologic damage not only that skin damage mainly because of the deposition of the porphyrin precursors in the skin right mainly because of the copropyrifosinogen 3 is the one responsible for the development of blisters and uh, porphobilinogen as well as amyl levulinic acid responsible for the neuropsychiatric symptoms that is the reason the blisters is the one can be considered to be a very important differential diagnosis in the case what we are discussing right now so what are the clinical manifestations same like in the like in acute intermittent porphyria the symptoms include episodic recurrent colicky abdominal pain again this abdominal pain is also because of the autonomic dysregulation and the psychiatric symptoms and autonomic neuropathies which mainly manifest as seizures constipation hypertension peripheral neuropathy all these things are seen but another important point what you need to know over here is patients are not photosensitive in uh, acute intermittent porphyria but in hereditary copropyrifosinogen the patients are photosensitive and they can develop blisters with the long term sun exposure this is the ddx points the patients of the hereditary copropyrifosinogen are photosensitive and can develop blisters and mainly the porphyrin precursors accumulates in the skin now what are the lab findings other than this guys everything is same with acute intermittent porphyria in the lab findings also only copropyrifosinogens are elevated other than this again there will be increase the secretion of the amino levulinic acid porphobilinogen there will be hyponatremia all these things are seen now what is the treatment again you want to stop heme biosynthesis mainly that can be done by decreasing in the synthesis of allosynthase so that is again done by hemin so hemin mainly acts to decrease the synthesis of allosynthase and thus decrease porphobilinogen and amino levulinic acid accumulation and also even in such case there will be discontinuation of the precipitating factors we know what are the precipitating factors in this case the precipitating factor is the like uh, fasting at a stretch of fasting but uh, even in this case it may be a valproic acid the most important precipitating factor other than that you know exogenous as well as endogenous gonadal steroids alcohol barbiturates like valproic acid and the low calorie diets and fasting all these are considered to be the precipitating factors but remember once again valproic acid and barbiturates are considered to be the most important the most common precipitating factor second followed by the fasting and mainly in this case if seizures are very severe seizure control as needed and uh, appropriate pharmacological therapy can be given in this case again previously we discussed about uh, symptomatic acute intermittent porphyria here also there is a symptomatic hereditary copropyrifosinogen even in this case there is a deficiency of the enzyme called as copropyrifosinogen oxidase but just a deficiency does not cause clinically evident hereditary copropyrifosinogen there should be a precipitating factor so even in this case there is a precipitating factor so for acute intermittent porphyria as well as hereditary copropyrifosinogen you always have to look for a precipitating factor if there is no precipitating factor remember that 
no psychiatric symptoms as well as no abdominal pain, no peripheral neuropathy, no photosensitivity, nothing can be seen. That will be asymptomatic hereditary coproporphyria like asymptomatic acute intermittent porphyria. So this is what you should know about the hereditary coproporphyria. 